Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with part two of the 26th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be checking out how my opponent played a hand against me, and I'll critique his play. Right here, he likes to min-raise from second position with Jack-7 suited, and I actually think this is a pretty bad play in general. I guess if he had something like 9-8 or Jack-10, I wouldn't really hate it as long as they were suited. I, I still wouldn't be even that big of a fan of it, because if you take a look at all the stacks at the table, you'll see that this player, or you'll see that everyone else has like 20 big blinds, or a lot of players have 20 big blinds, and anytime that's the case, you really don't want to be opening too incredibly wide, because players are just going to go all in over the top of your raise, and obviously you can't call a jack-7 suited. Um, right here, J Card Shark, that's me, he re-raises to 2400, and right here, J Card Shark's range is very tight. If I had to guess, I would say it's something probably like this. So pretty much just very premium hands that he does not plan on folding. So I definitely think that that's going to be his range for the most part. Folds back around to Campo, and he likes to flat. And I, again, I don't like this at all. I think if you think J Card Shark's bluffing, you can elect to shove. But really, J Card Shark, like I said, is never, ever, ever bluffing here. So there's really no value at all in calling because even if you do get a good flop, like Jack High or Seven High, take a look at the hands that J Card Shark's playing. Right? Um, Jack High flop, all you really beat is tens, Ace Queen, and Ace King. On a Seven High flop, you lose to all the hands except for Ace Queen and Ace King. So really, that's like best case scenario, and it's not going to happen that often. So. This is just a spot where you need to fold pre-flop. There's nothing wrong with raising pre-flop and then just folding when you get 3-bet. You know, a lot of players really hate folding when they get 3-bet, but particularly when you're shallow stacked, nothing good can come because you have no implied odds, and you need to have huge implied odds whenever you're playing a hand like Jack-7 Sudan. So he gets a 7, which is good, and right here I think the only play for Campo is to check-raise. And the reason you want to check-raise here is because Jay Karshark is going to bet his whole range, which is, again, all of these hands, and he's going to fold out ace-king and ace-queen to a check-raise. And that's not necessarily bad. You know, you want him to fold whenever he continuation bets with a, a hand like ace-king here. Um, if you lead out, what's going to happen is Jake Hardshark's probably going to play perfectly. He's only going to continue with hands better than top pair here. And that would be pretty much tens, jacks, queens, kings, and aces. But Campo does decide to lead out, and he bets really large. And what this does is it it's going to force Jay Cardshark to play perfectly, and you really don't want your opponent to be able to play perfectly against you because they're not going to make any mistakes. And this is an excellent example of what I see amateur players do all the time. They'll call a re-raise with garbage, and then they'll just bet out trying to... I mean, I really don't know what they're trying to do. I think he's trying to protect his hand, but in reality, all you're doing is getting it all in every time you're crushed, and you're making your opponent fold every time you're ahead. So you're allowing your opponent to make proper decisions, and that is the exact opposite of what you want to do in poker. In poker... It's very important to allow your opponent to make mistakes, and if you are forcing them into making no mistakes, then obviously you're not going to be able to win much money. So here, J Card Shark shoves, and of course he's going to show up with a monster, and Campo likes to call off. Interestingly enough, once Campo does make this bet here, I think he does have to call off. He needs to win about 21% of the time to break even. So let's clear this out. We'll give Jack 7 of spades. Let's give King King. And you will see that he does have 21, 22.5% equity, and that's going to be just enough to justify a break even call. And, you know, you really also, something else you don't want to do in poker is set yourself up to have break even decisions. You always want to make yourself have either a really easy fold or a really easy call. So, again, just another spot where I think Campo could have done something better with his sizing, assuming he wanted to check. But right here, whenever you do flop a hand and when you call in a 3-bet pot, when you have like a junk hand and you do flop some sort of pair, you should probably go in for a check raise to maximize fold equity, because all you really have here is a kind of junky draw. So, uh, he does get it all in, he calls off, and J Card Shark wins. So that's going to be that for this episode. If you guys have any questions or comments about this or any other videos, please feel free to let me know. And also, if you would like me to review some of your hands, please feel free to, po uh, to email them in, and I will definitely get to that. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.